guys, welcome to another episode of Hidden Gems of Cinema. I'm Jordan Ross. And I'm Michael Zavala. And today we're talking about A Guide to Recognizing Your Saints. For those who haven't seen it, the movie is a coming-of-age drama about a boy growing up in Astoria, New York during the 1980s. As his friends end up dead, on drugs, or in prison, he comes to believe he has been saved from their fate by various so-called saints. That's a really interesting movie. The guy that directed it, it's a... Uh, basically an autobiography yeah. of his life. It was this director's very first film. I thought it was a really good uh, debut for him. It was very good. In fact, if you didn't know that was his first movie, you'd be like, really? Wow. Because yeah. it was very well done. Well, And I think you can tell because it's obviously something very close to his heart since it's right. based on his, his childhood. You can tell that whoever made it is very passionate about it. Um, and it's it's very real and gritty. Some of it is kind of tough to watch, but uh, it's still, I mean, the performances are great across the board. Manning Tatum and Shia LaBeouf are great in this. This was actually the movie that kind of won me over on both of those guys. Yeah. The uh, friends, the way they hang out and talk is all very real. Yeah. Because, you know, the most of the movie, they're not doing anything. They're just walking around and being stupid kids and like throwing bottles and stuff that, you know, most teenagers do. They just walk around and do nothing. And try to, you know, find girls and flirt with them and just try to find things to do. I don't think most teenagers go as far as, as these kids, you know, as far as being terrible to people. Channing Tatum, for instance, his character is so mean. He's just an a-hole to, like, everyone. Nobody's safe. Yeah, he'll just be walking down the street and, like, act like he's going to punch someone and stuff like that. He's also, just got a lot of energy, you know? Yeah, he a lot of testosterone. A lot of testosterone. I, I actually knew guys like that in high school, some of the uh, football players. It's all pent they, up. Yeah, they were good yeah. friends. Like, they were loyal to their friends, but they would just do stuff that was just so, like, <laughs> rude and obnoxious right. and aggressive. Even little things, we'd be in a drive through and this one guy I knew, he'd be driving, and he would just lay on the horn while the person in front of us was trying to order <laughs> and uh, do stuff like, or he right. would throw like his sodas at people's cars. It was the kind of guy that it was like just embarrassing to kind of be around. Right. And that, I feel like that's one thing though that that bothered me is none of the older actors looked anything like the younger actors. They were to to me. Yeah, the, totally different. The uh, adult versions of them. I don't think Robert Downey Jr. and Shia LaBeouf look alike. You don't think? That? I mean, <laughs> and, uh, come on. Eric Roberts and Channing Tatum. Right. And uh, Melanie Diaz and and uh, Rosario Sir, Dawson. Dawson. Yeah. Oh, and their friend Nerf. Yeah. Uh, he's another one that looks absolutely nothing like he did when he was a kid. Yeah. It was edited really interestingly. That was right? my favorite thing about this movie. It was just the way yeah. it was cut. I mean, it yeah. was just um, it was a unique feel to a movie. Yeah. As the director, this was all part of his life and him, you know, trying to to share this part of his life with everyone. Right. And a lot of it, it's it's kind of like a memory because it takes place from Robert Denny Jr.'s perspective right. as the older Shia LaBeouf. And it has all these flashback scenes with Shia LaBeouf and his friends and stuff. And I feel like since the whole thing is like a memory, it's the director's memory of his childhood. As you were watching it, it felt as if you were trying to remember these events. There's like the little kid uh, sitting by the trash cans and he's like the little brother of uh, one of the the. Uh, Puerto Rican guys that beat up Shia LaBeouf. Right. So Channing Tatum and Shia LaBeouf and their other friend Nerf show up and uh, they're trying to ask this little kid where his brother is. But the scene before it gets to that, they pull up and then it cuts all of a sudden to a loud bang, like a trash can falling over. And one of the friends is like, what are you doing? Are you effing stupid? And then it cuts back to them pulling up and the scene happens and then you see them actually kick the trash can and he says, what are you doing? Are you effing stupid? And it jumped forward and then it went back and then right. showed how it got to there. Just and like a real memory would take place. Yeah, I guess that was the most impactful part of that memory. Right. And, and then, then you're was, like, what led up what, to that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I really liked the gay druggy dog walker. Yeah. Frank. Uh, he was really good. His name is Anthony DeSando. And uh, I've never seen him in anything mm. else. A lot of people, if you're playing... Uh, a gay person or if you're playing a drug addict it's easy to go way over the top with either right. of those type of right. characters and he was playing a gay drug addict but none of it was over the top it was all believable it was like you, you feel like you could know someone like that right right <laughs> uh, I hang out with a lot of gay druggies right. and, and I just gotta say that was really realistic. authentic yeah. yeah Shia LaBeouf uh, the director didn't want to cast him as you know, the younger version of himself uh, initially because he, he thought he was a good actor. He just didn't think he had the toughness or the uh, anger to pull that character off. Right. Uh, and Shia LaBeouf got mad apparently. So he went back in when they were doing callbacks and ran in there and like flipped the table over and punched a hole in the wall and like freaked out the director. And he was like, is that angry enough for you? And then he got the part. 
Uh, so basically, so he was, he was at just normal Shia yeah, at this yeah, point. Exactly. Yeah, he just went in he as himself. He had a paper bag over his head. <laughs> just do it! Just do it! That's uh, I'm just going to go in and like flip the table and punch the wall yeah. on all my auditions now. I was actually at one uh, where we're supposed to be playing a video game, and it's there's no lines. We just had to sit there and act like we're playing a video game and then get super excited whenever we win. And uh, the guy that went in before me, I I was like sitting there in the waiting room with like these other guys, and we heard him like screaming, and then we heard a loud crash. It was like real quiet, and he came out, and it was real awkward. And I went in there next and the ceiling tiles were like hanging off and the chair was broken. The casting directors were like sitting there with their eyes all big. So did he get the part? I don't think so. Oh, I would have hired him. Yeah, I know. Just out of fear. Yeah. If you got a movie, right? Mm-hmm. And and uh, it's based off of your life and you had to pick somebody to be yeah. you for yeah. the movie. You're writing and directing it. Chris would you, Pratt. Chris Pratt. Yeah. I could see that. Maybe Jason Biggs for me or myself. I don't know who mine would be, but I guess it would have to be like M. Night Shyamalan if I was to keep it somewhat realistic. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Aziz, Ray Romano. I'm sorry. Ray, Ray Romano. Yeah. Aziz, I'm sorry. I might uh, j- do a gender swap thing since that's big right now. Yeah. Just have like, I don't know. Uh, Aubrey Aubrey Plaza. <laughs> Aubrey Plaza. Just could, awkward. Yeah. That would actually be really that funny, I think. It would be great. I think she would be a great me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I was saying, the director. Um, I thought it was really impressive directorial debut. He got like career best performances out of a lot of the actors, which is really impressive for a first time director. Yeah. Like I think uh, Shia LaBeouf, Channing Tatum, Diane West, uh, Chaz Palminteri, however you say his last name. I think all of them arguably gave the best performances of their career. Even Robert Downey Jr. gave, I think, one of the best performances of his career, even though it was a smaller role. Yeah. I was um, hoping to see more of him in it, but... Me too. But in the scenes he was in, he was great. Yeah. Well, I'm your son. You know that, right? You're my son? Yeah, I'm your son, remember? Diane West, who was the mom in Edward Scissorhands... Uh, she played. Oh, that's Shia right. LaBeouf she was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. She's usually like the really sweet, like you know, the sweet, perfect mother that you yeah. picture in a movie. And she's still a sweet mom in this. It'd for, be like Miss Brady, right? Yeah. If she grew up in like Harlem, I would go mom for kids in Harlem. Yeah, exactly. But she had a little. She understood. She's street smart. Yeah. She knew, but she was still trying rough. to be nice. A little rough around the edges, but still a nice lady. And I think this might be one of her best performances too. And then Shia LaBeouf was is really natural. And before this. The only other things I really knew him from were like Holes and even Stevens. Right. Given the opportunity, he can do whatever you put in front of yeah. him. I, I truly believe that. He, I know he's he kind of crazy right now, but no, yeah. he's a great actor. Fury with David yeah. Ayers. He was yeah. really good in that. I think he was the best part of that movie. Oh, I guess we could do our favorite moments and scenes. So I'll let you start. I don't really have a favorite scene, but I do like the fact that how the movie was cut. And like you were talking yeah. about earlier, how it looks like a memory in certain scenes. And it just yeah. felt like it was very unique because, you know, a natural story would do this, this, and this, and this kind of went all over the board. Yeah, and you just kind of—I don't—I don't, I liked it just uh, from the um, storytelling perspective of it. Yeah, my favorite scene though is when Shia LaBeouf is in the bathtub crying, and mm-hmm. his dad comes in and is trying to talk to him, and he's like pushing his dad away, and his dad's like, "Don't you raise your hand at me!" <laughs> and he's like trying—he doesn't want—he's like about to hit his son, but right. he's trying to comfort him at the same time. Yeah, it's a very <laughs> conflicting like, moment. They're both crying, and and. That was like the big falling out he had yeah. with his dad in the movie. Right. And uh, that was a really, really powerful scene. And that scene alone showed me like, wow, Shia LaBeouf is a really, really good actor. Yeah. Don't you talk to me like that. Don't you raise your voice to me. You're my son. Come on. Don't come in. What's the matter with you? It's going to be all right. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's going to be okay. It will be okay. This is a really good movie. It's really heavy. So kind of have something happy on, on standby. Like Shrek. That's a, Shrek's good, one. a good one. Yeah. yeah. But it's still a really good movie to watch for the performances alone. If you have any recommendations or suggestions for a movie that you think is underrated or underappreciated, just let us know in the comment section. And if we pick your movie and do an episode of it, then we'll give you a shout out on that episode of Hidden Gems of Cinema. So uh, thanks again for watching. I'm Jordan Ross. And I'm Michael Zavala. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>